Hey everyone, Mr. Shafty here to close out the chain rule by talking about Leibniz notation and how it's used to calculate the derivative of parametric functions. So using Leibniz notation for the chain rule, we're basically going to say that if y equals f of u and u equals g of x, then dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx, where dy du is evaluated at u equals g of x. What this is basically doing is it's splitting up the chain rule into two specific functions and we're going to define the functions to be y equals f of u, so that's the first function. Its derivative is dy du, because of course, if you take the derivative of y with respect to u, then you've got dy du. And the second function is u equals g of x, where this derivative, the derivative of u equals g of x, is du dx. Now if we break our function up like this, where we have our outside and our inside and we take our derivative separately, notice that inside the derivative, uh, the du and the du would cancel, leaving us with just dy over dx. So this is a way to, cal uh, to calculate the derivative um, of a function using the chain rule by making it a little bit more explicit um, as to what the layers are and calculating the derivative of each layer separately. Let's try this in action in example five. It says the polynomial y equals 9x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus one, which can be rewritten as 3x squared plus one quantity squared, is the composite of y equals u squared, which is the outermost layer, right? Something squared, something squared, outermost layer. And um, the composite of that with u equals 3x squared uh, plus one, which is just the inside of that piece. So. Instead of um, putting it together this time and using our normal chain rule, which is just f prime of g of x times g prime x, we're going to try Leibniz notation this time. And Leibniz notation says to calculate the derivatives separately. So let's first consider y equals u squared. So y equals u squared, the derivative of y with respect to u is equal to 2u to the first power, and then the derivative of the second piece, which we'll call u equals 3x squared plus 1, uh, is the derivative of u with respect to x, which is equal to uh, 6x to the first power plus 1, which is the same thing. And so Leibniz notation says that the derivative of y with respect to x, which is what the answer we originally want, is just the product of these two derivatives. So if you take them, and you say, okay, so the derivative of y with respect to x is the product of 2u times 6x. Well, we have to plug u back in before we're done. We know u is 3x squared plus 1. So this is just equal to 2 times 3x squared plus 1 times 6x, which can be rewritten as 12x times 3x squared plus 1. Okay, it's notable to add that this, this function could have been differentiated uh, using the chain rule. So real briefly, I'll just kind of showcase if we assume that f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 1 squared, then f prime of x using outside inside would be well the outside most layer is something squared. So the derivative of something squared is just 2 times that something raised to the first power times by the derivative of the inside, which is just 6x. And so then if I multiply the 6x by the 2, I get 12x times 3x squared plus 1. So I get the same derivative, whether I use Leibniz notation or whether I just simply use outside-inside chain rule. Um, so you might ask yourself, okay, well then why does Leibniz notation exist? It seems like a really complex way to think about the chain rule when I can just do the chain rule. Well, Leibniz notation has its purpose. And one of the, the biggest things it can do for you is it can actually derive parametric functions because parametric functions are defined to be in two separate pieces. Instead of just y equals a function of x, um, now we have x equals a function of t and y equals a function of t. And I might ask you what's dy dx? And in terms of a parametric function, that's a little bit more complicated to, to think about um, right off the bat you could just simply use Leibniz notation to calculate the derivative. So, long story short, this problem says, find the equation of the line tangent to the curve at the point defined by the given value of t, which in this case is going to be pi over four. So to start this problem out, the first thing I need to understand is that x 
is given in terms of t. So the first derivative that I could consider is the derivative of x with respect to t. Okay. Now the derivative of x with respect to t is just simply the derivative of 2 cosine of t, which is just going to be 2 times negative sine of t, which I'm going to pull the negative out and call negative 2 sine t. Okay. And then the second function is y equals 2 sine of t. So I could take the derivative of y with respect to t, and that's going to give me the derivative of 2 sine t is just simply 2 cosine t. Okay? Now, this problem is a little different than the one before, because what I have right now is dx dt and dy dt. But if I multiply dx dt and dy dt, the dt's don't cancel, and I don't get dx over dy or dy over dx, which is really what I want, um, yeah, easily. So instead, what I think I'm going to do is I need to take dy dt, and I need to multiply it by the, the reciprocal of dx dt, which is dt dx, right? which is the reciprocal of this piece right here. So this is going to equal um, dy dx, right? This is this is because the dt's cancel. So this is what I want. I want the derivative of y with respect to x, the derivative of the function with respect to x. So let's calculate it. So if I do dy dt, which is 2 cosine t, divide by, I'm going to reciprocate the dx dt, which is going to be negative 2 sine t on the bottom, and just a 1 on top. And I could simplify this actually to negative cotan t. So dy dx is actually equal to negative cotan t. In order to now find the answer to the problem, I'm supposed to be finding the equation of a tangent. So I need a slope and I need a point. Well, since we just found the derivative, let's do the slope first. So if I want to find the slope, I know all I have to do is just simply plug in um, the, the point, which is pi over 4, into my derivative, which is right here. So I'm going to calculate it at negative cotan of pi over 4, uh, which is going to be equal to negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. So I know my slope, and my coordinate point is basically just the original function evaluated at pi over 4. Now the x-coordinate of my original function, so if I were to calculate this, the x-coordinate of my original function is defined to be 2 cosine t. So I'm going to have to do 2 cosine of pi over 4 just to calculate the x. And the y-coordinate is 2 sine t. So I just need to plug a pi over 4 into 2 sine of pi over 4. And then this together will give me my xy-coordinate pair. So this is equal to um, 2 times the cosine of pi over 4 is just the square root of 2. It's the square root of 2 over 2 times 2. And uh, the same thing goes for the 2 sine of pi over 4, and I get the square root of 2 again. So my coordinate point is the square root of 2 comma the square root of 2. So my tangent is simply y minus the square root of 2 equals m times x minus the square root of 2. So I found the tangent to the parametric function um, to the curve of, uh, of this function right here at pi over 4. And again, Leibniz notation really makes it easier because I take the derivatives separately.